So morning, welcome along to Eclipse Motorcycles. I'm out on a different bike. Yes, we have one of these in, the Lex Moto Iska. Been a while since I've ridden one of these. What a gorgeous thing this is. Never was a lover of these uh, sticky out tank bits at the front, but believe it or not, I'm a lover of it now. It actually shields your knees from the wind. Lovely little daytime running lights at the top. Nice bright lights to the front of this. Very, very similar to the Assault, except with the Iska, you've got the road going front end. Very similar tank design to the Assault, though, and lots of bronzing all around this bike. And you've got that adjustable suspension to the rear. So we're going to get this one out. We're going to have a run on this. And as I say, it's been a while since I've been out on one of these little Iskas. Absolutely gorgeous bike, this is. So we're going to get out. We're going to crack some mileage up on this one. Now this one is due to go out in the next couple of days. Bright and early again, as always. 7 a.m. And we're going to get out and get some mileage up on this bike. Now this does get up to 40 mile an hour very, very quickly for the purposes of ride testing. Five speed box on this. Seat is slightly different to what you would find on your standard road going bike. The seat on this does tip you up slightly into the tank so it's got quite an inclined seat that pushes you into that tank which I do like. Holds you nice and firm up against the front of the bike and with that little raised bit at the back it just tucks into the back of your uh, backside just to hold you in. And it does lean and steer through those corners absolutely lovely. Nice raised bar position on this, and the gearbox is so smooth. Which is uh, something I wouldn't expect from a 125. It is very, very comfortable. And very, very easy to ride this one. Mirrors on these, very high again. And as always, I normally check the mirrors. I've got about a third of my shoulder in that mirror. But as I always say on all my ride tests, Never ever trust a mirror. All right for just checking behind you, but if you are going to be uh, obviously riding, do those, the shoulder checks. Make sure that you're getting your shoulder checks in while riding. The lights on this, going by what's throwing on the road, and obviously it's quite early this morning, but even brightening up, those lights, you can see them on the road. So, nice and bright, it's not going to be like your candle in the dark compared to a sort of other 125s. Lights on these are very, very good. And obviously very, very easy to see the clock, see your speedo down there, you've got your gear indicator, you've got your fuel tank, and you've got that nice big rev counter. And the functions on these, very, very easy to get to all the controls on this if you've got big gloves on or your thin summer gloves. Very, very easy just to manage all those controls. And the actual road holding on this is very, very nice. And like I say, with all the Lex Motos, it does what it says on the tin. If you look after it, you maintain it, you get it serviced on time, it will last you a good amount of time. And obviously, good coat of ACF 50, as I say on every bike. Keep it washed, keep it maintained. Road salt is a killer. Especially over the winter months, road salt can be an absolute killer on your bike. So if you're going out in wet weather or it's slightly damp, you are going to pick up dirt and road salt. If you're obviously driving in just the dry days and you're a fair weather biker, then it's going to be alright. But always keep your bike cleaned and maintained. That is what's going to do the longevity of the bike, looking after it, keeping it maintained and making sure that you're servicing on time. And it's holding a nice steady 40, obviously we do a little burst of 45, which is the maximum we're allowed to do under road testing mileage. And I bang about on about this on all my videos. Servicing regimes on these. 40 miles an hour, little burst of 45, for the first 500 kilometres, 311 miles. Get your service out the way. Most dealers charge between about 60 and 100 quid. 
some charge about 120 we charge 99.50 for all services and that's up to 125 whatever bike it is first second third fourth whatever service it's still going to be the same 99 pounds 50 that's oil and filter change full bolt check full light check grease lubricate and adjust the chain check the tire pressures check the tappets if required and check your spark plug as well so that is a full service you get a lot of dealers go oh yes we can give you a full service you get it and it's a quick bolt check oil and filter change so make sure that you are checking what you get for the price of your service ask the dealer what are you going to do on the service and they'll be quite helpful and help you out if they say oh you know it's just an oil and filter change mate and a quick bolt check should you really be paying 120 quid and we're going to switch lanes here I'm going to do my first bit of uh, dual carriageway mileage and I tend to do uh, the first big bit on the dual carriageway because I can rack the mileage up now we're going to come in hard on that front brake and just look how quick this thing pulls up absolutely lovely that's got combined braking on this one and just obviously you're not here to feel it but the smell of new bike, that exhaust burning off, absolutely love the smell of a new bike. The visor up for a second, just so you can get some engine tone off of this. And a lovely purr from that 125 engine handles absolutely superbly now this time we're going to come in on the rear brake and once again pulls you down effectively now combined braking on these will give you around about 60 40 or 70 30 from front to back most of your brake force is going to be on the back as we always say front brake is the one that you're going to need to use because you're putting the weight over the front wheel so progressive braking don't go grabbing at brakes easiest thing to do nice progressive steady braking get your brake force down get your g-force on that front wheel make sure the front wheel is planted and obviously if you're going into corners try and stay off those brakes adjust yourself into the corners or adjust your speed before you go into a corner most of the time where you get wash out on the front end and you lose it is either being too hard on that front brake or braking going into a corner in damp conditions now the tyres on these obviously nylon tyres but I never have an issue with the nylon tyres any tyre is a good tyre it's all down to rider experience and your road conditions now, if you remember back in the 70s and uh, I doubt very many of you young ones will but back in the 70s all the Hondas, Yamahas, Kawasaki's, Suzuki's all had nylon tyres and there was never an issue back then obviously with the uh, the way tyres are going with the new compounds and the two CTs tyres have got a lot better so it's down to individual preference just make sure that you're obviously riding within the limits of your tyres you're not going to be trying to be uh, Mark Marquez and get your knee down on any bike road tyres are not designed for that but obviously a lot of people do like to get your knee down on the big sports bikes like me but I tend to run very very expensive tyres on most of my bikes and obviously a lot of the guys uh, big sports bikes tend to ride the Pirellis or the Avons Tourers you tend to find most of them have the Bridgestones on so the Touring tyres I tend to run Michelins all the time I am a big lover of the Michelin Pilots or the Michelin um, Pilot Roads or even the RS's very very nice tyre now obviously my bikes my ZX I tend to run uh, Michelin Pilot 3's 2 CT's which is a 2 compound tread and he said said oh when it comes it's going to have michelin pilot fives on it road fives which are the new ones that have just come out hellishly expensive 
But I always say, if you're getting tyres, you get what you pay for. But with a little 125, and I always say little, obviously compared to big bikes they are little, but with a 125, any tyre is a good one, because obviously they're a lot thinner, but they do the job adequately. And the tyres for something like this, you're looking around about 40 to 50 quid. Which isn't bad if you're going for sort of your mid to budget range tyres. If you're going up for something like uh, your Michelin's, your Pirelli's, you're looking about 70 to 90 quid. Which is still not bad for a set of tyres for the year. A couple of hundred quid a year for tyres. And always make sure that you check your tyre pressures before you ride. Most of your tyre wear is going to be caused from either under inflation or over inflation. Now if you happen to be uh, on the YouTube, and I think the video feed is still up there, Military Biker, we were on his channel on Friday, and uh, we had a quite, quite a nice good bike meet on there. Obviously a uh, couple of guests came in chatting about obviously PTSD, stress of biking, stress of what's going on, and then we were chatting about new bikes. But very, very good channel. Now, obviously, there's a lot of bike bloggers out there. And we had a good old chat. There was about ten of us in the room at one time. So, military biker was in there. We had Jim Diesel pop in. And Zed Head. Wibbly Wobbly Harley. Just to name a few. But all those guys are listed on the bottom of every YouTube video. So go and check out some of those bike channels. There's a load of them in there. White Rock Rider, another one to mention. Sets of Independence. So many that I can never remember all of them. So obviously if you're one of those uh, motor vloggers, stick your name down in the comments because then people can see who you are. They'll come across and check out your channel. And congratulations to my friend Wibbly Wobbly Harley. He's managed to get himself 200 subscribers, so he's, his channel is climbing up. Now all of those guys bike vlog, just for the love of being a biker. We don't make much money out of YouTube, unless you're one of these uh, channels that's got thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. We do it for the love, I enjoy doing what I do. You know, I have a great passion for bikes whether it's sports bikes, road bikes, tourers, cruisers, the big old Harley baggers, I'm getting into them, but you know, I was never a big lover of cruiser bikes. And with a feet forward riding style, was obviously I've been a sports biker for near, near on uh, 40 years now. But I do enjoy the, like, the, uh, the look of those cruisers now, it's possibly the fact that I'm getting old. And obviously I've gone and got myself a ZZR 1400. I mean, it's known as a hyper bike, but it is a sports bike, but it is still a big touring bike as well. And we did have a lot of fun, obviously, test riding the Z our ZZR that we've got in the garage. So much so that I enjoyed it that much, I went and bought one. And obviously I was due to pick that up this weekend, just gone. And obviously due to lockdown, it has been put on hold. But the bike is still sat in my friend's garage. And he has said to me, he said, you're right, it's wrapped up, I'm not going to be riding it anymore. When you're ready, come and pay your money. I'll, top, you know, refill the oil for you, do an oil and filter change, I'll top up the water on it, because he's drained the whole bike out for me. He said, but when you're ready, come and give us a shout. You can pick the bike up, so... I should be looking forward to later on actually getting out and doing a run once lockdown is over out to my favourite place which is the Super Sausage Now I wish you to have a ride on the ZX this weekend but obviously uh, other commitments that I had took over but we did start her up and she fired up on the button first time so that was another good point for me this weekend, actually getting her started and uh, just having a sit on her and uh, give it a bit of a rev bomb, much to the annoyance of my neighbours. And uh, I've had a lot of people say to me, you know, what fuel do you run in your bike? I tend to run uh, a bit of a concoction. 
So I'd always say, if you are riding in a 125, stay away from supermarket fuel. Supermarket fuel is cheap for a reason. And it, the reason being, obviously those big fuel buntings that you see at the big storage depots, what's sort of halfway to the top is filtered off. And that is what goes to your prime stations like BP, Shell, Texaco, SO, etc, etc. All the uh, crap that is left on that bottom of that tank, so that includes all the sediment, all the water, everything that's all settled to the bottom of the tank, is then drawn off, and that is what goes to use supermarket stations. That's why supermarket fuel is cheap, because it's basically all the crud and the crap off the bottom of the tank. Great if you've got a big car, great if you've got a big bike it's not going to make any difference but on the 125 these bikes do not like supermarket fuel so stay away from Asda stay away from Tesco's unless you've got a big bike or a car 90% of the bikes that we get in with fuel issues where did you last fill up or oh, I filled up at Tesco's yesterday that will be the reason why loads of water dirt silicon all your rubbish is all going to be at the bottom of that tank now obviously I tend to run shell and the reason being the bottom of my village we have that the shell station and they all know me in there and I tend to fill up with the shell V power for the extra couple of pence that you're going to spend per litre on premium fuel and these things do 100 plus to the gallon is it going to be worth saving that money just to get to five or six pence extra in your pocket no fill up with the premium full fuel what I also tend to do is uh, do a thing called shooting so you can buy these from liquid molly and they're called molly shooters and they are fuel additives got a cleaning agent in it it's got an octane booster in it and that will just wass up your fuel to get a little bit higher octane and obviously shouldn't be doing it every tank but normally I shoot up about one in every two or three tanks so full tank bang a molly shooter in they're normally about uh, eight or nine quid and that gives you a little bit of boost to your octane so molly shooters are a very very good thing and I will swear by them but obviously my my bike is obviously running open baffles bigger jets so she tends to pop bang and spit flames which is just what you want from a big sports bike and uh, if you've seen some of the acceleration videos on my bike you don't do know that it shifts like the proverbial bat out of hell and obviously when I start to obviously get the ZZR I'm moving into a totally different league so we are 10 miles in and doing very very well no issues at all with this bike indicators all work good horn is lovely and loud on this have a listen to this it's loud enough to be heard obviously uh, one two five still sat at 40 mile an hour and it's pairing along like a little kitten this thing absolutely love it so we're going to uh, head down this dual carriageway a little bit more, get a little bit more urban mileage on it, and then we're going to hook back to the garage, quick wash down, dry it off, get some hot air just to dry the bike off, and then I'm going to ACF the hell out of this. And people ask me, what is ACF 50? Anti-corrosion compound, if it's good for aircrafts, and they use it on all the Boeings and all the big jets and planes and helicopters, that's what it was designed for and obviously it came onto the biking market, ACF50 anti-corrosion compound and I tend to coat the entire bike with it, it includes the panels all the grips, the switch gear, everything, absolutely smother this bike in ACF best thing to do, stick it on a microfiber cloth and wipe it onto the bike now the only downside with ACF, it does make the bike attract dust it's going to attract the dirt, it's going to attract the dust, but it makes washing it off a hell of a lot easier 
and it just inhibits that rust from starting. I tend to coat the exhaust and people say, why do you coat the exhaust? Because it burns off, yes, but it still leaves a layer on the exhaust. And it's just going to inhibit that corrosion on the exhaust. The exhaust is going to be the first thing that rots normally. Then your bolts, then your swing arms. So just coat the entire bike. Obviously make sure that you are avoiding your tyres. You're avoiding your discs and you're avoiding your pads. Anything that comes in contact, braking surfaces or tyres or in the road, you don't want to be putting oil on them. But ACF 50, very, very good product and I swear by it. If I could bath in it, it might preserve me, pickle me a bit but longer. As they say at the garage. And now 12 miles in, we're going to come off at this dual carriageway, we're going to head down, we're going to do a little bit of urban, head back to the garage. So we've got a couple more live feeds going up this week and uh, we shall see who's going to be on the, uh, the wonderful YouTube web this weekend and this week. As I say, most of the guys that I follow are listed at the bottom in the comments of every video I post. So go down there, check out, check out all the hashtags as well. And my fingers are starting to get nippy now. I should have put my winter gloves on, not my, uh, my Kawasaki summer gloves. But I've done 12 miles, you know, and my fingertips aren't freezing cold, just starting to tingle a little bit on the ends. Obviously it's a little bit of a cold morning. But it's not horrendously cold today. It's going to be a nice warm day, I think. It's going to be a good biking day today. I've got a shed, lo mo shed load more bikes to ride yet. Got a couple more Titans to do that are going out this week. And then I've got an Assault to ride as well. We've got two of those in at the moment. We've got the blue one which has been sold. I have a grey one which has just been sold as well and just found out I've got another grey one that's arrived. So if you want a grey assault I have one left. Also got in the Tempest GTs. Absolutely love those. You know, if you've seen the uh, couple of Tempest GT videos that I've done that thing absolutely pops and bangs and rides like a good and nice little sort of cafe style racing bike very very nice so I've got two of those in the showroom at the moment if you fancy getting yourself a Tempest GT now new bikes from Lex Motos are due to come in about the next couple of weeks and I am desperate for anything that is twist and go at the moment we are completely out of stock I've managed to sell 12 Titans in about six months so I'm just waiting for those to come in so as soon as the lights change we can get back to the garage I can have my uh, obligatory cup of coffee and a cigarette and then get on with the the day now we've got a very very busy day today a lot of bikes going through again <clears throat> and if you've seen the yard obviously when I did that last video from the yard with all the bikes we're currently pushing in and out every morning about 28 bikes they're so all ready for the summer season and we've got 600 right up to about 1400 so we've got the ZZR in we've got the, uh, the GT 1400 which is a touring version of the Kawasaki we've got a Daytona in on the Blackbird, absolute shed loads of bikes and that Harley Sportster as well. So, if you are into a used bike bigger than 125, we've got quite a lot of them. If you're in a little uh, used twist and go 125, I have a Peugeot Speed Fighting, which is just under two years old, and I've also got a Honda Forza. The last time we had a Forza in, it went literally nuts for that Forza. Absolutely gorgeous bike. So loads of used bikes available. And that is at Eclipse Motorcycles. The link is down the bottom. Eclipse Motorcycles MK.co.uk. Telephone number underneath 01908 643 603. As always, if you enjoyed me babbling on and telling you about bikes, hit the like and subscribe button 
notifications, hit the bell, it'll tell you when my next video is coming up. And as always, you can find all the media on my website, which is revbomb.co.uk. Merch shop's in there, all about me, and the last page is the social media's links to the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And there's also a link in there for Eclipse Motorcycles and their Facebook page to give those guys a follow. We're almost back at the garage. And if you are into uh, having your bike serviced, 125 or a big bike, we do servicing, we do MOTs, we do tyres, we do repairs. And until the next time, from RB and the crew, have yourself a good one. Whatever you're doing, be, right, be well, ride safe, and it is a big goodbye from me.